This hunting documentary was filmed in August of 2016 by Jamie Carl and features lifelong mate Andre Alapati and director from the Red Stag Timber Hunters Club, Dave Shaw. In this hunting trip, our strategy was to descend into a series of tributaries that fed into a major catchment in pursuit of a representative Samba stag. Pretty dry through here. Very crackly. But at least we're out of the hop scrub now, that was horrible. We started walking in from a high elevation and took advantage of a few lookout points where we were able to glass across the gully onto the opposite northwestern face before dark. The, uh, the weather's generally fine but there's these little snow flurries that keep coming through. It's, um, it's actually really cool. It's good, I think variable weather is actually what you want. I'm going back up to help Andre and Dave get the, get the camp gear. And we're actually going to set up camp a bit earlier than what we planned just because we probably can't see it because it's in this snowy cloud now but on this other side of the gully these are all north facing and northeast facing slopes so they catch the sun first thing in the morning and it's actually reasonably open to glass so that's what we're going to do tomorrow morning first thing because tonight's going to be a uh, brass monkey going to get well below zero and I reckon those deer are going to be moving straight into the sun. They'll even be ready for the sun before the sun hits them. So and it, they're also tucked out of the way of that southerly uh, wind which is typically where this weather comes from the south. So anyway I don't want to jinx us but it's I think you can't ask for better conditions really. I love to hunt in cold, miserable conditions, particularly if there are breaks in the weather. Not only because there are fewer people out in the bush, but because the deer become more predictable. Deer generally won't move far, so once you find them, they'll be tucked out of the wind, near food, and in warm sunshine areas. I was glassing down a bit further, like maybe another 100 metres. Oh mate, the, the whole lot just opens up to um, a series of sort of glassable bush. Look at that, it is actually going to yeah, clear up. I made a bit of a spot there for you but if you oh, yeah. prefer to sleep underneath here you possibly can even under here. Because I levelled I leveled it for you. After a cold night of minus 5 degrees Celsius, we woke to a cracker of a day and spent the morning glassing into a northern face of bush opposite camp, hoping to find a deer sunning themselves. However, with limited deer sign up high, we were unable to spot any deer. Eager to utilise the middle part of the day, which from a hunting perspective is typically non-productive, we packed up base camp and moved everything down into the tributaries below, where we hoped to find fresh sign. young horrible hop scrub here pretty unpleasant having to push through this very noisy the going for the first hour was frustratingly slow but this was to only get worse the further we dropped down into the tributaries a bit better through here Been eating the young shoots, the budding flowers, budding seeds. I feel for the boys because I've taken them down off the top. We're on a bit of a spur. We were supposed to follow a spur down to the bottom of the valley, and I've taken them down into what was reasonably open to start with. Not a spur, in, in the gut. It's got very tight, steep, bouldery, sometimes bluff um, ledges that you've got to navigate your way through. And uh, it's not pleasant at all, that's for sure. But there's plenty of sign in here, so I guess on the upside we're moving closer to where we want to be. And the sign's pressure too. 
It's not on. It's not as old as the stuff up top. And it's a lot easier to see down here too because the soil's softer. It doesn't have as much leaf bark cover, which um, you do get up higher. So, anyway, it's certainly not easy. Um, we're we're going to earn anything that we see. But that's what it's all about. 180, 180 metres to the creek and 950 metres to where we want to get to them. Ah, that's good. So we're dropping out of the, what's called the subalpine and we're dropping down into mountain ash forest and uh, some of this forest hasn't been burnt in a while so um, it could be very thick in places and, uh, and it also can be um, fairly clear in other places so the northern slopes will be a little bit more thin than what the southern faces are. The southern faces generally hold the moisture in the spring and the summer months and continue to grow and the northern side just too dry and it stays thinned out. So we're currently on a south facing slope now which is why it's so thick with plenty of moisture and water, soil soft. <laughs> but uh, if we'd stuck to the original plan we would have been going down a north face. So I'm the one to blame. There's another big rock ledge, rock face sorry, with ledges on it. We didn't ever get our way down. We could hear the main creek below, but we're obscured by a series of hidden bluff systems. We questioned whether any surveyor or human being, for that matter, had ever been in the area before to ground truth the that. In any case, spirits were high as we came onto a lot of fresh sides. Rail slide down this, gracefully. coming down this face. We've been bluffed out a number of times. We had to climb up In fact you can even see remnants of some of these bluffs just here you see. Yeah. It's just like that the whole way across this face. You feel like you're sidling down a, a reasonable um, contour and then it just suddenly bluffs out with a big boulder that's 50 metres high you know. And you've got to backtrack your way up because you can't soil through it. It's just a real dog of the day. Unfortunately, I'm in a bit of an open, um, well, a little bit of a good going bit here. And Dave and Andre aren't too far behind. I just want to get down to that main river so we can start to actually uh, drop gear and do a bit of a Scout. Our evening hunt plans were hindered with each bluff system that we encountered. A bit easier going through this stuff, eh? It's still, yeah. still tight, but. Doesn't catch as much. Uh, we're making uh, much better progress now that we're in. It's really thick dogwood, but at least it's. Um, at least it's more of a uh, gentle contour just coming through that steep stuff and having these ledges and crown fern that block everything underfoot sometimes you took a step and you didn't know what was under it and you'd fall a metre and a half so it twist your leg off so there's a few game trails through this stuff I'm just trying to stay on the game trails Unfortunately, we reached the creek with only an hour of daylight. Well, we're down in the river now. This isn't um, the, main, the main river, this is a tributary of it. 
but we're not far from the main river so we've still got to get essentially probably another 700 meters but at least we're not um, going to be caught out in any of those bluffs that's pretty testing our objective was to find a flat spot to camp in the main river, tucked out of the way but in close proximity to where Sandal were feeding. It's pretty fresh. It's very fresh. Hope that this is where we're just coming down the river. We had just found a suitable campsite and dumped our bags when a mature Sam behind honked at us from 40 metres away. Dave and I quickly cut across the river and picked up on her very fresh sign and followed it with the wind in our face. As you would expect with Samba though, the sign led us straight into a thick and noisy patch of hop scrub and dogwood where we spooked a decent stag and another animal that was with it. Unfortunately I was unable to get a shot away as the mature stag crashed off like a freight train. We carried base camp in our backpacks and stalked our way down river to where we encountered the most amazing network of game trails, tunnels, stag rubbings and fresh sign that I've ever seen. last night, one being a stag and the other one being presumably a younger animal and um, we're packing up camp and heading down river and on the way down we've come across two walnuts where a stag's been there overnight so we're uh, certainly in the active zone but I don't think we're going to get onto them down in this river flat this morning, I actually think we've missed the mark we should have um, been up before light and been hitting these areas at the change of light because now the deer will be moving up onto the faces to bed down for the day and then ruminate but, um, this evening if we stalk the river flats you know, thoroughly and quietly we might get some of those deer that have moved back down off, off those bedding faces there's just sign everywhere, it's really good. I feel much more um, confident about our situation now that we're down in, the, down in the zone that they're active. It's just not non-active up high. Mature stag marks spilled down from several leading spurs onto the bush flats and at any moment I was hoping to catch a deer on its way back from its feeding ground to its bedding area. Just 
this little drip drip spin span if you break a small twig you can almost get away with it being part of the rain event <laughs> I came across acres and acres of heavily browsed hazel pomaderas it's a common food source for Samba in winter and it grows near streams and is easily recognised by its broad leaf and soft furry underlayer. Well, there's been um, been a lot of sign through this riverbed, especially hard up against the toe of the slope where it starts to cut up. You can see um, they're sort of using that last little bit, to, that last band of flats to feed on before they head up. So all these droppings are around that um, edge of all the flats, and then you can see all these trails cutting up into the uh, onto the faces where they can sun. It'll be pretty hard to stalk them when they're bedding down, but that's probably going to be what we need to do once we drop camp off. It's 9 o'clock now. We've still got another 700 metres to go down this river. I'm not sure where Andre and Dave are. I have a funny feeling they're still up a bit. Um, we agreed to stay on either side of the river, so I've been on the true right, and those boys are on the true left. You know, uh, this uh, bush down low is actually really enjoyable and um, having a great time sneaking around it's reasonably quiet a lot of fern um, some places where you can get a, a fairly open uh, shot through a bit of undergrowth and other parts which is a little bit tight and then there's other parts like this where you can see a couple of hundred meters With Samba during daylight hours, I have found them to be most active in the last couple of hours of light between 5 and 7 p.m. or in the first couple of hours of light between 6 and 8 a.m. During winter, I expected to find them down reasonably low during twilight hours, which was confirmed by the extensive amount of fresh sign that we saw on the bush flats. We did our best to stay as close to or wade in the rivers as possible. This was to limit our ground scent from spoiling future hunting plans on the surrounding bush flats and this strategy came at the cost of having wet boots, but I believe it significantly improved our probabilities of success. Crossing rivers should always be done with your mate at a safe passage of water with clear visibility and always exercise extreme caution. I'm pretty confident of a hit, it's just a shoulder hit, so it's run with the bullet. That's, that's still fresh. Yeah, there's deer prints. Somewhere around here though, because I shot through this tree. Yeah. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Blood, 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 blood. Right, so here we go. Blood here. It's looking pretty red. Could be a lung shot. Could be a um, could be a bit of a track here. We've given it a good 20 minutes anyway, so at least that's let it probably sit down and uh, start to seize up. But on the shot, she just bolted straight out through the scrub, almost as if she wasn't hurt. You can actually see whole heap of blood on here as well where she's come brushing through it could be spilling out hopefully it's not too low in the leg I did shoot with my bag on mm -hmm. I'm, I'm pretty confident of a good hit here because you can see she's carried this blood trail all the way through you can see it for the next five meters left hand broadside shot 180 grain I don't think she's going to be too far Good stuff, bro. Good stuff. 
stuff. Wouldn't want to do it with anyone else, mate. That's bloody awesome. good. Got a camp, mate. She's run all of about uh, 20 metres and then piled up in this hop scrub. You can actually see how much they've browsed back. If you look across here, they're browsing back all this is that stuff I was telling you about. Yeah, um, yeah they, they just love it. So they're breaking it all. These, these deer will be well fed, good condition. Oh, we're close to camp, which is, which is good. You want to just gut it and then drag him down there and leave it to the right man. Yeah, I'll take it out to this more open bit. At some point, Sam and a few different glands, and this is their pre orbital gland right there, which they use to preach and mark on. And then what Jamie's talking about are these tarsal glands, and they use that to mark scent off. So this, this kind of wet spot there, there's a gland in there. That Smell stinks. that. Oh jeez. Yeah, and, and then they've got another one in their in their rear end there. So but these are their main communicators. They use this to mark on trees and um, preach trees and stuff like this. And each each animal has its own distinct smell too. So That's the right. stags can tell whether it's a you know a young animal or an old animal. Exactly. You're probably still looking at a hundred kilo animal. Oh, this will be meat. This will be meat for the rest of the trip. After a midday brew, we left camp for an evening stalk and soon came onto a small group of samba just feeding off the flats. There's, um, there's four of them. One of the hinds just popped up into the scrub because it spooked, but it's fucking just come back down to the bearing. It's way up there still. We've got ages to go. So we'll get down to the creek. I reckon he'll be better off going and cutting them off because they're going to feed across the space. So if I was you, I'd get down there and I'd go and aim for the part of there. Let them feed to the bridge. I'll say to Dre, mate, aim to get over there because they're feeding. Because you know how the sand, they don't feed down, they'll feed across. There turned out to be five samba on the opposite side of the river. A young stag with a deformed antler which Dre put a stalk on. That was a bit of a shame because um, Andre managed to make it back. And I split off from Andre and he was just starting to make a stalk across this flat. But this flat's covered in fern. And I suspect the stag split from uh, and I'm cutting across because I could see it looking down. It's looking very uneasy. Unfortunately, Dre had a close but unsuccessful encounter with the bow, and so we pushed on with our evening stalk plans downriver, slowly making our way through a series of lush green bush clearings and hope to find a mature stag on last night. Slept in one of these. Last night we stayed under a fly. Surprisingly roomy when uh, when I first saw them. I didn't think it fit two people, but it fits two people reasonably okay. Anyway, tomorrow's day four, which is Sunday, and um, we're going to just do a stalk for the whole day without bags on, which will be really good actually. See you in the morning. Oh, I've just woken up. It's uh, Sunday, so day four. And we're right in the thick of it. See what we can uh, get onto today. After our third cold night at camp, our plans for the day were for Andre to bow hunt on his own along the true left of the catchment, focusing on the northeastern faces that catch the morning sun while I took Dave downriver to initially stalk the bush flats until about 9am and then cut up into the bush, 
and sidle in and out of a series of guts and folds on the true right, one third up from the valley floor. While quietly stalking I could hear the distinct sound of a disturbed or alarmed bird and decided to sneak in for a closer look. I soon spotted a mature hind, then a yearling, and waved Dave in to sneak in with his camera for a look. We watched them for about half an hour before I got impatient and tried to close the gap, leaving Dave behind, but in hindsight we should have waited it out all day in case a stag materialised. Did you hear me whistle to you? Oh. That's when like two or three of them broke right above me. Yeah, so we gave it about half an hour with that hind just watching it and we could hear sticks breaking so there was definitely another deer there. And um, I left Dave behind to try and sneak in and then heard one of them sort of move off down to my left and I turned around just to let Dave know and did a little whistle. Just a Obviously an unnatural sound in Australia, stupidly, and then break. About three of them crashed off above me, just down through this dry stuff. I was below them and they crashed off uphill. It was probably going to be impossible for us to put a stalk in without, I mean it's just dry underfoot now. But um, everything we're standing on is breaking and cracking. So uh, yeah, that's what we could hear in the deer. They, make, they gave their uh, position away. Um, but it was just too hard to close the distance on them. Andre, Andre, you copy? I've just shot a stag with my bow, mate. Um, do you guys want to make your way up to me? Are you having a saw, mate? Are you serious? I am dead serious, mate. <laughs> There's a stag lying down about 70 metres from me. <laughs> well done, mate. We, we got onto a few deer in the bush, but um, I stuffed it up, yeah. I'll tell you about it when I get back to camp. About five of them. You got us in stitches. So, wh wh how far up off the creek bed are you? I'm in the creek bed right now. Um, he, he ran, like I said, he ran down the other face, down through the clearing at me, and he's now, he's basically now where I shot him from. That's outstanding, Andre. Well, mate, if you can, well, I, I'm, I might go meet him. I'll leave you to carry on. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. Sounds yeah. good. So I'll give you then this. Uh, can you tell me what your coordinates are and I'll, I'll get Dave to plug it into the, to the GPS. Dave set off to join Andre while I continued sidling for the rest of the day, combing the terrain for a mature stag.
I found a dry north facing gully system which was surprisingly open but very dry underfoot. Fresh deer sign was transient and the soil type was quite hard with an abundance of leaf cover which covered any fresh deer prints. Nonetheless, it was the sort of area I was expecting to find deer bedded down at any moment. Eager to cover good ground while I had it, I pushed on for several hours before realising how far away camp was. I'm probably as far as I can possibly get from Andre and uh, Dave. Um, the camp's about seven kilometres away now. I've been on this road and it's been really good going so I've just been giving it boosts and then glass, boosts and then glass. Before I know it I've already moved two kilometres from where I did a mark um, and that's quite a wee way up from the junction and the junction is quite a wee way down from camp. I'll boost it down to where I've got the open faces I'll keep an eye out because it's starting to come on to that golden time, 3.30. I route marched along a well used four wheel drive track to get back to the bush flats in haste for that last hour of productive hunting life. Stop this track. Thank you, well good break. Not only had my pants and feet finally dried off for the first time in four days after spending a long day sliding across dry faces, but the river was waist deep. I can handle wet feet and pants, but I'm no fan of a wet backside, especially as chafed by this stage with dry. As I snuck across the river, I could hear what sounded like sticks and branches rubbing together. I thought the river was causing two tree branches to make the noise, but I couldn't locate any trees in or near the water, so I decided to climb onto the riverbank for a better look. Stag too. Oh, right in the neck. You beauty. Jamie, there. Yeah, mate. I just shot a stag in the neck. It was just, just in front of me, throwing its uh, antlers around on a bit of scrub, and just dropped it on the spot. Hey, you're not going to believe it either. I was just trying to call you on the radio. A massive stag just walked into camp, like monster. You've got to be joking me. Yeah, mate, I'll just put it... Oh, there's another Samba. Mate, that's a good stag too. Oh, yes! So stoked with that. It's probably a, uh, I'd say like a 26 inch stag with good, good symmetry, good shape. Beautiful look to it. Very dark, big body. Gotta be happy with that. Gotta be happy with that. Yes, that was a big day today. Ah, oh, that was a big day. Oh, far out. That is all worth it when you get one of these donks on the ground. Yeah, Andre. Hey, this stag could be close to 28 inches, eh? I hope he is. Oh, that's amazing. Oh, I actually can't believe the Oh no no mate, I'm I'm down the, uh, I'm I'm far down river. I'm on that big flat, so I'm. It says I'm 900 metres from camp, so it's definitely not the same stag. This uh, yeah, this one, 
had another animal with it, so. Just come charging down, stay on your true left. You've got to be kidding me, so you, you had it on camera, you got it on camera. Oh my god, so how, how did you guys not know it was there? And I was riding the fire and I turned around to come and do a radio check on you. And um, as I turned around to look up, there's this thing just standing at the log, like, from, like, just past camp. Fuck! That's unbelievable. No worries, anyway mate, I'm going to come down and give you a hand. Um, and Dave's going to come on me so we can capture it on camera. Yeah, it's a huge animal mate, it's such a big animal. Oh, well done, man. That's fucking awesome. That's a big deer. They are such big deer. That is a Samba stag. That thing there would be 300 kilos on the hoof. No doubt. That is a beast of an animal. Right on last night, as you'd expect. Long day, you know, coming back by head torch, which is so common for, uh, you know, shooting old, mature anything, you know, whether it's a bull tar, right on last light, Samba stag, right on last light. Oh, I'm just, yeah, the feeling is indescribable, but I can't wait till Dre and uh, Dave get down. You know, sharing moments like these is pretty, pretty much what it's all about for me. So, you know, memorable end to the trip. <sighs> Oh, rat. McCondre's trying to get hold of me. Here we are, back at camp. We're up next to a nice fire. Andre shot a nice six pointer with his bow just over there. <laughs> 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 Old Davey's there, the coal miner. Down in New Seaman Coal. We reminisced over the past four days while watching the fire burn down to its embers, retelling the memorable moments from what had been an epic adventure. Eventually we fell asleep by the fire, only to retreat to our tents in the wee hours of the morning. Alright, and so the climb begins. <laughs> with backpacks laden with about 40 kilograms of meat, antlers, base camp, camping gear, bows, rifles and water, we bush bashed our way straight up out of the valley towards the vehicle, each having to overcome our own internal mental and physical barriers. Got onto the main ridge now. <sighs> oh. Well, feels good to be high. I'd rather be high than low right now. and a half hours into our climb here and we've well and truly broken the hill in terms of the steep parts and now we're just on a gradual um, spur that'll take us onto the top probably sitting now at about 980 meters so just under a thousand meters Country over there, other side of that ridge. Yeah, I filled up two bladers. I gave you two. Nah, I put water in them both. Here we are, right in the Hansel and 
Great old thickets. They horrible. Um, exhausted. Come close a few times. Just want to lie down and go to sleep in the middle of the forest. But we've got to push on because we've got to get to the top. You can do anything you put your mind to. You normally, handle a lot more than what you think you can. Well, we're nearly at the wall, which is our last. Dutch effort to climb up out of this catchment onto where the track is. So, we're about 80 metres from the wall, and we're about 200 metres from the top. So, I'd say there'll be a few stops between here and there. Yeah. Thirsty, I'm hungry, I haven't drunk much since we left the valley. I haven't eaten anything since the morning. Dear diary, today has been the most grueling day of my life. Well, now we're in the last 1%. Really cut through this, it's almost like broom. We're all exhausted. Ah, finally, we've found some water. Had our water all day. The last push to the top sat every last bit of energy that we had left, not helped by the lack of water or food. We wore out the last bits of cartilage from our hip sockets as we stumbled onto our vehicle after dark. Just got onto the track and I'm pretty, pretty wrapped about that. <sighs> Despite our aching bodies and tested minds, we were saddened as we departed from the spectacular Victorian high country towards Melbourne. After what had been a very fulfilling hunting experience, we'd given everything to the country and in return the country had given back. Memories that we will continue to cherish for the rest of our lives.